Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to transform multiple elements for abstract hover effects in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and then click on add new. Next, we're going to give this page a name. So I'm just going to call this transform multiple elements since this is what we're doing in this tutorial. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and click on use Divi Builder and we're gonna build this from scratch. So over here, we're gonna need one single column and in that column, we're going to need an image. So I've just searched for it and I'm gonna select it. Next, I'm gonna click anywhere around here to add my image and the image I'm gonna add is already in my media library. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one. Now, if you wanna use uh, the exact same images as I'm using throughout this, throughout this tutorial, you can go ahead and click the link which I've provided in the video description below. This link will take you to the post and in that post you can actually download this layout and that layout, once you install it, it will have all the images that you need. All right, so now that we're here in my media library, I'm gonna click here on my image and upload an image. Okay, so now we have our image uh, added right away. We need to go and add our hover effects. So I'm gonna click here on design, transform, and over here, we need to go with the first option, which is the transform scale. And what we're going to do here is we're going to apply the scale to the hover state. So I'm going to click here on this arrow, click on the hover tab, and then I'm going to increase this by 10. So now this is going to be 110. So now we're going to go to the next option. This is transform rotate. And over here, I'm just going to set this to 9 degrees. Moving on to the next one, we're going to go to Transform Skew. Set this to 3 degrees. So pretty much all is done now. I'm going to go ahead and save. So the next uh, settings we're going to do are going to be applied to the row settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to access my row settings. And then I'm going to come over here to Design, Sizing, and we are going to set our max width to 400 pixels. So I'm going to type it manually because as you can see, our image was just way too big. So I've just reduced the width to 400. Next, let's head over to our padding settings. So I'm gonna scroll down to spacing. And for the padding, we're gonna set this to zero to the top and the bottom. And to apply that quickly, just click on this chain so that the same value is applied to the bottom. Right, so the next stage now is to add a background image to column one. So to do that, I'm just gonna come back over here, click this gear icon to access column one, I'm going to click on background. And then over here on the third tab, we're going to add our image. So I'm going to click this plus button. And this is the second image I'm going to add. Click upload an image. Next, I'm going to add a box shadow on my image. So I'm going to come over here to the design tab, click on box shadow. And I'm going to choose my style, which is this one right here. Now I need to adjust the positioning uh, so that my shadow is on the top left but we want this to be happening on the hover state. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to start with the box shadow horizontal position, click here on this uh, arrow, click on the hover tab, and we are going to start by adding minus 30 pixels because we want this to be happening on the hover state. Now let's go to our vertical position. Again, we're gonna click this little arrow and make sure that our value is added on the hover state. In fact, this needs to be minus 15. Now our shadow color is not really matching our design here, so we need to uh, change it. So I'm gonna come over here to our shadow color and I'm just going to paste my color in here. So I'm just gonna highlight what we have and paste my new color. So now I can see the, back, the color here that we have for the shadow now matches our image. And also, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right, so the next stage is we are going to add some transform settings to our row. So I'm going to come over here to transform. And the option I'm going to go with is going to be the skew. And again, this is going to be happening on the hover state. So I'm going to, in fact, I need to come back over here. So I'm going to click this arrow making sure that you've got transform skew clicked. Now this needs to be minus three. Okay, so now that we've uh, added everything, let's go ahead and take a quick preview. So I'm going to save changes and then publish this design. 
So here's what we have so far. You can see this is a really cool effect. Okay, let's go back to our Visual Builder. Now it's time to work on the next design. So I'm just gonna click here on this plus button, click on regular. And again, as we did before, this is gonna be a single column. And I'm just gonna close this for now because I need to go into my row settings and make some changes. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon to access my row settings. And we are going to go straight to our column one settings. So we can start off with uh, adding a gradient. So I'm gonna click here on background and then click on the second tab. Click this plus button and now we have the option to add our two colors so my first color is going to be a transparent color so i'm going to click here and to get your uh, settings for transparency you can just drag the slider down a little bit until you get your rgba values so i'm going to paste my values between the brackets just like that and then i'm going to go to the next color and this is going to be a normal hexadecimal color. So again, I'm going to highlight what I have in here and paste my color just like that. Now I'm going to insert my image. So I'm going to click on this third tab, click this plus button. And this is the image I'm going to use. So I'm going to select it, upload an image. Next, I'm going to come over here to my custom padding and we are going to add zero to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to click here on spacing. And then I'm gonna add my values. Right, so we are going to come back to uh, our row settings later on. So the next thing we need to do for now is to add a call to action. So I'm gonna save this and then click this plus button to add our module. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. So let's start adding our own uh, customized text in here. So I'm gonna change my title to travel with points. Uh, for the button, click here is fine. And for our content, I'm just going to add my own content here and replace what we have in here. So this is going to be for a limited time only. And uh, finally, we're going to add a button. So the button I'm going to add, as you can see right now, the button is not showing. So in order for the button to show, you need to come over here to link and then you want to add a link here. So in this example, I'm just going to add a blank link. So as you can see, my button now is appearing. The next stage now is, as you can see, we added a background in our previous step, and this has been overridden by this uh, color that our call to action has brought in. So we need to come over here to background, and where it says use background color, we need to say no. So now we have our background uh, that we added earlier on. Right, so the next stage is to come over here to our body font, and we are going to change our size to 16, because currently it's at 14, so we need to make it slightly bigger. And uh, we're also going to customize our button, because right now, as you can see, it's blending in the background. So we need to uh, customize it a little bit. So I'm gonna click here on button, use custom styles for button. So let's start by adding our button text color. So I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Next, we're gonna come over here to our button background color. I'm gonna click this plus button and paste my color in here. And for the button border width, we're gonna set this to zero. So all we have now is just the text. Now, as you can see here, my call to action is just way too close to the top and the bottom. So in order for us to give this some breathing space, we are going to go ahead and add some padding. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing. And for the top and bottom, I'm gonna add 20% and same as the bottom. So now we can see that uh, we have some breathing space and our design is looking much better. The next step is to add a border to our design. So I'm gonna come over here to border and we're going to set our border width to two pixels. And we're also going to give this a color. So I'm gonna click here on this um, eyedropper tool and paste my color like that. Now let's head over to our row settings and add our designs. So the next stage now is to add our hover effect. So to do that, we're gonna come over here to our column, click on this gear icon, and then we're going to click on design box shadow. And this is the option I'm gonna go with, so I'm gonna select it. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is to add my color in here, and my color is gonna be a normal um, hexadecimal color. So I'm gonna paste my value in here like that. And then I'm going to make some adjustments to my horizontal position. So I'm just gonna scroll a little bit here so I can see all my settings. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with my hover on horizontal position. So I'm going to click this arrow, click on the hover tab, and this needs to be set to 90 pixels. Next, I'm going to go to my vertical. I'm going to click this arrow again. And on my vertical, this needs to be set to 80. Next, I'm going to come over here on the spread strength. Again, I'm making sure that I click on this arrow because if you don't, then your settings will not be added correctly. So I'm going to set this to minus 40. Now, let's go to the uh, transform settings. So I'm going to scroll down here, click on transform. So I'm going to start with the rotate. Making sure that uh, I've got my hover tab open. So I'm just going to add my values in here. So I'm going to start here with the x-axis. And then over here on skew, I'm going to make sure that this is set to minus 4. Now, before we add the hover effects to the module, uh, let's come over here and set our size for our rows. So I'm going to come over here to design, sizing, and we're going to set this maximum width to 400 pixels. Now, there's also something that not, that's not looking right. Our gradient has not been applied to this image correctly. So I'm going to come back over here to my column settings. And what you want to make sure you do is to click here on the actual gradient and then scroll down until you find place gradient above background image. So just say yes to that. And now our image looks correct. With that set, now let's go ahead and add our hover effects to our call to action. So I'm going to save changes. I'm going to save one more time. And then I'm going to go into my settings for my call to action. So right away, we need to make sure here we're in design. And then we're going to come all the way down here to our box shadow. So the option I'm going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to select it. Okay, so the next stage is to set our horizontal position. So we need to make sure that this is happening on the hover state. So I'm going to click here on the hover tab. Click on the tab. And then I'm going to drag it all the way down here to zero. So we're going to do the same. Click here on this arrow making sure how the tab is selected. And this is also set to zero. Now we're going to go to the shadow color. So I'm going to make sure that this is set to white. And finally, we need to add our scale, rotate and skew transform properties on hover. So I'm going to scroll down here, click on transform. So let's make sure that our hover state is uh, hover option is selected. So now we have the hover tab. So over here on the first one, which is the transform scale, we're going to set this to 115. Next, we're going to come over here to transform rotate. And here we're going to set this to nine degrees. Next, we're going to come over here to X and Y, I mean to transform skew. And on hover, we're going to set this to three degrees. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at our final design. So this is the first one that we did. And as you can see on hover, it has a really cool effect. Now moving on to the one that we've just done. Again, it is a really cool effect. Now what you could also do is you can uh, play around with the sizes of the uh, hover effects to achieve a different type of styles. Like for example, uh, here on the bottom, you can see here that we've uh, made some changes and this is looking slightly different. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.